Catholic theology, but it's the same in this area, pretty much. They were given a test. God showed them Jesus, God becoming man. And he said, bow down and go, my son, who will do this great thing. And one day the angel said, you are almighty God, you are all loving, you are all this and that, whatever else. But to bow down to someone other than you, we cannot do. And so God threw them out of heaven, and they became the devils who now seek to do evil, to take that good out of people so they have nothing. And that's really what brings us here today, because we recognize that's happening. And we recognize the fact that something can be done about it. We've heard of exorcism, heard of blessing objects with holy water, giving medals, a lot of Catholic traditions too, but there are other traditions along the way too. I know a lady who is Jewish, who had an exorcism, and certain verses of the Bible in Hebrew were proved very significant there. What the devil lacks is the ability to love. What Jesus has, what God has, is the ability to share love with others. And the key element, I believe, in all of this is and a person can turn from nothingness, hate, or worse, and begin to love. Then they will be extracted out of their evilness. Exorcism is a rite of the church that does that. Informal exorcism, the rite of the right, R-I-T-E, that we all can use to tell the devil to get lost, is important too. If we have faith. I'm not talking about religion now, I'm talking about faith itself. If we believe in God, and that God can do this, then we have a chance of helping ourselves and others. I am very pleased to see so many people here tonight seeking to find out what it's all about. I wasn't able to be here earlier, so I don't know all that went on, but when you talk about paranormal and psychic and these kind of things, there's so many different aspects of it that I'm not going to say anything is good or bad, true or untrue, because I myself have had times when suddenly I knew just what to do and I didn't know how the world I came to know that. But I needed that to help somebody, and I did. I also had one time more than one time, suddenly stopped doing what I was doing and went to do something else because something told me not to do that anymore. What's all that? Is that the operation of faith? Is it the protection of God? Is it my own innate ability? That one I scratch, it isn't. But what is it? And through my faith in God, I believe it is he who uses his creatures, me, you, whoever, the rain, to help others. You hear about the amicable horror before. I knew one of the priests that took care of that. So I have, as Paul Harvey would say, the rest of that story. <laughs> and it doesn't differ too much than what was said. It was real, even though some people would say not. And it was real because someone turned themselves over to the devil when they shouldn't. A conference like this is an excellent opportunity to examine, to find out the answer, and seek to do what is good. I'm sure there are some doubters here who will go home and say, oh, wasn't that nice, but I don't believe a word of it. Okay? 
Because if you don't believe me, I can't make you. Neither can a conference, neither can Lorraine or anybody else here. For a number of years, I worked in association with a priest who was an exorcist. And I learned how to do things and what to do and all that. And when Father Lopato became Archbishop of New York, two or three years later after that, he came, one day I came to him, or he came to me rather, and said, you know, he says, why aren't you doing the exorcisms? Why do we always call that priest from elsewhere to come? I said, well, I said, do you want the simple, honest truth? Because you never told me. What do you mean? I said, I can be the exorcist for New York if you appoint me. You are the only one, the bishop is the only one in the diocese that can appoint an exorcist. Oh. Is that all there is? You're appointed. And I said, and I knew him well, so I could do this. I said, could I say a word or two? And he looks at me and says, no. <laughs> Unless it's going to expand upon what I said. And I said, yes. I said, I'm not going to refuse. I didn't mean that. Oh, okay. I said, how about we get a few more? Let's find three or four more priests in the Archdiocese of New York that I will train, and they can also do things. Because I live 90 miles from New York City. We need somebody in New York City itself. We need somebody in Bronx. We need somebody in Westchester. We can handle things locally, and then, if necessary, we can come together to do a joint exorcism. So it's a good idea. I'll think about that. In about 30 seconds later, all right, set it up, and I'll do what you want. <laughs> that was a good relationship that I had with Father Lopan. And we did. We appointed six exorcists. And immediately our good friends, the Redemptorist Fathers, transferred two of them that were in the group to Chicago. Good for Chicago, bad for us. Because when the Bishop of Chicago heard about it, he appointed them exorcists right away too. So there's a lot of interesting things and such. But when we study the paranormal and the parapsychological and the diabolical, one of the first things has to be that we believe. If we don't believe it's real, we're not going to bother taking, taking care of it. And so I'd like to point out a couple of things to all of you that you can do yourself. When you suddenly begin to find everything's going wrong, is that just your inability? Or could it be the devil working against you? Either one. Try this. If you're a Christian, when you're going to do something that's difficult and spiritual, say, in the name of Jesus, I do this. If you can't do it, in the name of Jesus, whoever's bothering me, leave me alone. And you'll find you can do it. If you don't believe in Jesus, you can say, God, in your name, help me to do what you want. You do that too. And I also believe that anybody who doesn't believe in God at all can also effect something. It's a little more difficult, but because it requires lifting your heart and mind in a way. Whoever takes care of the world, and I don't say this mocking man, I'm serious. Whoever's in charge of the world, whoever's in charge of seeing the good things happen, help me to do it. Now some would say, I'm sure they're in agreement. You're really praying to God, you just don't know what to, who to call him or what, or what to call him. But that's okay. God knows. And that's the main thing. 